All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Helgren. I'm the Associate Athletic Director for Communications here at the University of Toledo. I want to welcome you to Savage Arena for today's press conference and introduction of our new head women's basketball coach. Before we, yeah, all right, sure, sure. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone, if you could, uh, to set your cell phones to silent, if you would. Uh, and just a quick note, uh, before we begin, uh, following our introductions, uh, we will have a short uh, Q&A session with Coach Bogus and Jim Heller, who is the voice of the women's basketball on the Rocket Radio Network. I'm sure many of you know Jim, so that should be fun. And following that, we'll have an opportunity for our friends in the media uh, to ask questions for Coach Bogus in the creative studio, which is right out here in the lobby of Savage Arena, uh, right by the ticket office. Fans, you are welcome to come out into the lobby and watch and listen if you want to participate in that as well. Finally, uh, Coach Bogus will be at the Rockets baseball game tonight at Fifth Third Field, 6 o'clock. We're uh, playing that other blue and gold team, the University of Michigan, at 6 at Fifth Third Field. And Coach will be meeting fans in the fourth inning, I'm told, in the area behind Section 105. So either remember that or just walk around until you see Coach Bogus, and you can come over and say hi in the fourth inning. Uh, with all that taken care of, uh, please allow me to introduce the president of the University of Toledo, Dr. Gregory Postal. Thank you very much, Paul. Good afternoon and welcome. What an exciting day for us to be here. It's a, a beautiful day weather-wise, which uh, I think fits with the occasion. Thank you to our loyal fans, uh, our staff, a number of our other coaches uh, are here uh, today for this wonderful announcement. We really appreciate you being part uh, of a significant event in the history of the University of Toledo. So it's impossible to overestimate the impact that women's basketball has on the city of Toledo. Uh, so the first and, and most obvious impact is right here in the front row, the impact on our players. Not only do these young women learn the skills necessary to be great on the court, but they learn the skills necessary to be great in life. Uh, they do well academically, uh, they are mentored in their area of interest, uh, and it's all around an extremely supportive environment. We are so proud uh, of the support and the program uh, that we are able to offer. Uh, the next obvious beneficiary is the community. And, and those of you here, I don't need to tell you uh, the impact women's basketball has on the city of Toledo. Any of you who have been here on game day uh, will know that that goes without saying, uh, particularly one Day I remember well when we beat uh, Michigan, uh, the kind of energy, <laughs> the kind of energy in this arena is is uh, something that you only see uh, in in Power Five schools, and it, it's because uh, of the enthusiasm of our community. So a couple of weeks ago, my cell phone rang. I was out of town. I looked down, and it said Trisha Cullop, and I got this sickening feeling uh, because it wasn't the time of year when you would expect to get a phone call like that and, and usually that only means one thing and, and sure enough she was calling to, to tell me the news uh, which I would have expected. She's just such a fine person. She wanted to make sure everyone knew uh, who was going to be impacted by the decision she made uh, and I knew that the only thing uh, that could take away uh, the, the sadness associated with that phone call uh, would be our ability to hire the next Trisha Cullop, the next person who can continue to take this program, uh, build from what's already been built, and take it to even greater heights. Uh, so when Brian asked me to interview finalists, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do so, it was very, very obvious that Jenny Bogus was the person who was going to take us to the next level. And we've all been on cloud nine ever since. And so here we are today to celebrate and we welcome her and Kristen to the Toledo community. Uh, please make sure she's welcomed here because she's going to do a fantastic job and continue this tradition. Uh, and we expect all of you uh, to continue with your enthusiasm as well because we need it. Thank you and go Rockets. So uh, next uh, on our uh, list, I have the privilege of introducing our athletic director, Mr. Brian Blair. Good afternoon. 
Feels like about two years ago I was standing in front of here, so no pressure today. This should be easy. Um, I'd like to start with a couple thank yous, um, if you'll indulge me for a second. One, uh, to this team sitting right in front of me. Uh, we sat on a Zoom uh, not too long ago, and I had a conversation with you, and it was a, a moment of a lot of emotion, a lot of feelings, a lot of hurt, um, a lot of wondering what's next. And I asked for two things. I asked for patience and trust. Um, and you didn't have to give that to me. Um, you don't owe me anything at all, um, but you did. Um, and I'm incredibly appreciative to you, and I'm so glad we got to introduce your next head coach to you before the world knew for social media, which never happens nowadays. Um, and I'm so proud we were able to do that because that was important to me um, that I kept that trust for you and ladies. So, so excited about today and what that means for each of you. I was so appreciative of you and what you represent and how you represent um, the University of Toledo. I want to thank Dr. Postal uh, for his leadership and support. Um, it was interesting as we talked after the finalist, um, and he, he talked to pros and cons of, of the candidates, and he said, well, do you want me to tell you who my favorite is? And that's a tricky question when you're talking to your boss, because if you don't go with your boss's choice, you, you got a tough predicament. Um, lucky for us, the, the answer was unanimous. Um, we landed on Coach Boggess, so we're excited about that. I want to thank the MAC and Commissioner John Steinbrecher. Um, we took over their offices for about four days. Um, and set up shop, and John's probably the only person outside of our search group that actually knows some semblance of who we talked to because he was buzzing back and forth for the Final Four in his offices. But he let us take those over, and we're really appreciative. I, I want to thank Al Thomason and Nicole Alderson. Um, Al's our deputy AD, handles our external. Um, took over their life for four straight days. Um, basically put everything on hold, spouse, kids, whatever. We got to hunker down. We got to figure this out really quickly. Um, and Nicole Alderson. Um, our SWA, our Chief Operating Officer, our Sport Administrator uh, for Women's Basketball. She spent a lot of time with this team, um, even dating back to when she first got here, going to Greece with them, and so appreciative of her perspective, her vigilance, her organization skills um, throughout all this. And, and quite frankly, most people don't realize it, but we were actually doing two searches at one time because um, we were also doing our swimming head coach search at the same time as women's basketball. Um, so to be able to navigate both of those flawlessly, really a testament to you and the, the professional that you are. So thank you. We, Drew and Marcy uh, from Collegiate Sport Associates, um, a lot of times people talk about search firms and they, oh, what do they do? Are they doing the job for you? And that's not at all how we use a search firm, but they do help streamline communication, streamline resources, uh, research um, to help you get a solid pool of candidates you feel really good about. And you know every nook and cranny about their background, about their trajectory, about what people are saying about them. Um, so couldn't have done it um, at the rate we did it at without Collegiate Sport Associates. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank Kelly Savage. And she's going to kill me for doing this right now, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. Kelly, I mean, we are in Savage Arena right now for a reason. And you would never know it by interacting with Kelly Savage. She represents, to me, everything that is great about this community. The most humble person, the most passionate person about Toledo women's basketball that's so selfless, never wants any credit, never wants any shine, wants to do best, wants to make sure we take care of these young ladies. Every time we talked, it was about what's best for the young ladies, how are they going to react to this, are we thinking about them? And so can we get a round of applause for Kelly Savage? And I can definitely tell she's going to kill me. So, <laughs> um, during this process, I spent a lot of time refreshing my memory on the history of women's basketball here. Um, and there's so many countless memories. I think you go back, especially during the Finley days, talk about the fan support really coming alive and the championships. And then you look at what Coach Colt was able to do and really build on that foundation and getting us here today. And so you go into this and you say, oh, no pressure, right? Um, this will be easy peasy. We'll figure it out. So I'm very detailed on how I do head coaches searches, and I've never publicly talked about this, but a very defined way of going about it. You start with a profile. If you don't start with a profile, you'll get lost very quickly because what you suddenly realize is every agent, every community member, every coach in the country has got your cell phone number, and they're calling you right away and saying, I'm the next best so-and-so. And so when you start with that profile, you start with a well-defined picture of what this community, what this team needs to be successful going forward, and then you match those candidates to that profile. Then you want to match those names in three ways, I believe. What have you done? What does your resume say? Who have you recruited? What games have you won? What have you accomplished? Have you won games as a head coach? What did that look like? Um, what do others say about you? When you walk into work on a day and you spill coffee on your shirt, how do you treat people? I wanted to make sure we hire a really good teammate, a really good person for this position. And then last, what do you say in that interview session? You, you get a lot of actors out there that can be whoever they want to be for an hour in an interview session or whatever it may be, but you still need to feel good about working with that person and feeling the energy in the room in terms of what they d deliver. 
So our profile was really, we want a great teammate. Uh, someone who values family, who values being a part of a broader community. Somebody who's got that personality and willingness to engage the fan base, engage the community. Somebody with head coach experience. We can be tr really picky at the University of Toledo. We've got a tremendous program. We've got tremendous fan support. We can be really picky about who we want leading our program. We don't have to take chances on unproven coaches. So we were able to go out and say, hey, no, we want head coach experience to be a part of this. We want experiences of all levels, and certainly those levels which we aspire to, right? Um, you also want somebody that's been a head coach, but you want somebody that's been where you're trying to go. And the great thing is, I think we found all that um, in our next head coach. So we moved with pace. I, I think always in today's world with football, basketball, you want to move with some pace in these searches. You got the transfer portal, and what I kept telling people is every hour we don't move, there's one more phone call or one more email coming in for our young ladies to try to poach and pick our roster apart. We've got to move with some pace. I think secrecy and confidentiality is incredibly hard um, in this world of high profile searches and lots of media attention. I see our friends from the Blade. Um, but you want to make sure you keep it confidential because you'll lose a lot of really good candidates. They feel like their name gets out of there and they back out. 75% of the world was in Cleveland for the women's Final Four. That made this interview process a lot easier to navigate a lot quicker. Um, now, we just so happened to find the 25% that was down in Florida um, at the time when we did the first round of interviews. Um, but more than so many candidates were there locally. It allowed us to move really, really quickly. Um, and so we look for a unicorn, right? You, you get significant interest for a position like this. Many of the top Power Five assistants, lots of sitting head coaches, lots of people ran out. We looked at over 30 plus candidates um, and over 10 plus interviews um, in a four day period. And we landed on Coach Bogus, who did three interviews in four days. Rapid pace, whirlwind, when we first called her, I think she was down in Florida on vacation. We interrupted that. Um, then we flew her directly to Cleveland to get in front of her and be around her. Then I got her around more meetings. You, what you're looking for is some consistency in what they say. You want to ask them the same questions. You want to feel good about who they are. But we had standard questions. And I think the one that stuck out to me is we asked this question to every candidate, is following Coach Cullup a challenge or opportunity and why? And every candidate gave kind of the same canned, safe answer. And Jenny's first words were, I don't think like that. And then she proceeded to walk us through in a confident fashion her vision for Toledo, not just coming here to reach and maintain what we've done, but certainly reach that standard and then push us forward and lead us forward and talk about the ways which we could do that. And so you make this hire, you get lots of opinions from, from social media, from fans, from everybody. But there was one that stuck out. So I had an assistant coach from Monmouth send me a DM um, on Twitter, and I don't know the individual that sent it, but he said this. He said, I know you have a lot going on, but I just want to reach out to you and let you know what you already know. Coach Jenny B is one of a kind. She's an elevator. She brings people up with her. She elevates those around her on and off the court. She is a tremendous leader, recruiter, mentor to both men and women. I'm so fired up not only for her and the basketball program, but for your athletic department as a whole. Great pick 10 out of 10 times. You just made Toledo better. Again, that's an assistant football coach on that staff at Monmouth, unsolicited, sent me that note to make sure I knew that we got the right pick. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our 10th head coach, Coach Jenny Boggess. Those kind words made me a little emotional there. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here today. Uh, I want to thank President Postal and Brian Blair and Al Tomlinson and Nicole Alderson and also Kelly Savage, who were integral parts of this process, and for giving me this incredible opportunity. Brian's passion for creating an elite student athlete experience and his commitment to recruit, retain, and develop, creating the best teammates. His vision to elevate the brand, this is contagious. And if you've followed my career, you'll know I get very excited about contagious energy. The leadership here at Toledo is unparalleled. 
And when I was thinking about accepting this job, I knew my next step would be locking arms with the best in the business. I found myself incredibly excited for what I was walking into, quite literally, but even more exhilarated by who I was walking in with. So thank you for your leadership and thank you for trusting me with your program. As we know, every new beginning is some other beginning's end. So I just have to make sure I pause and thank Coach Cullop, my most sincere gratitude for her help and support and grace during this transition and for the incredible team and program that she's left here today. <laughs> I'm wearing heels, so we're just gonna keep pumping this thing up, all right? A massive thank you to my family, especially my wife, Kristen, and her family for supporting this dream. And if I have learned anything in the 21 years of coaching, uh, but the three short years as a head coach, she will quickly become all of your favorite in this duo, and I will be in the background. The coaches, the mentors, and the friends who have lifted me up and poured into me and educated me along the way, I thank you. And as a dear friend told me when I was considering this position, you don't have to fly a rocket, just go be a rocket and do what you do. So brought it down a little bit, kept it kind of simple for me. But one question that seems to be circulating this week is who is Jenny Boggess? I hear you. That's a question I've worked really hard to be proud to answer every stop along the way. I grew up in a town of 1100 in Lincoln County, West Virginia. No, there was no stoplight, we had a blinker. Uh, Friday night lights and rivalry games were everything. I was actually a manager for the football team so that I could lift weights in the summer. It's a little different in a small town. There's no, uh, no Planet Fitness Coach Jeff. But nothing was bigger to us than those rivalry games and to getting our names in the newspaper. Hamlin is where I learned about community and representing something bigger than yourself. Hamlin is where I learned to show up, to take care of one another, and to love big. And I promise to do that here with you. The fun thing is, I even had an NIL deal back in the day. I didn't know it, but our local State Farm agent paid for my first basketball camp where I got my first scholarship offer and then went on to play college basketball at a small Division II school called Wingate University, go Bulldogs, down in North Carolina. From there, I became a graduate assistant and worked for some incredible head coaches along the way. Got kind of a name as a recruiter in the business. Uh, but it was when I got to Columbia University and I was working for Stephanie Glantz, who was the former associate head coach for Kay Yao and Pat Summit, that something sparked in me. Uh, she was a great leader, and great leaders always spark something in their people. Decided to take the job at Marquette, sight unseen, much like here. And trusting the plan for me was bigger than the plan I had for myself. We finished a nine seed that year. It was a really hard year. Um, but we went on to win three Big East championships, had a Big East freshman of the year, back-to-back -back Big East players of the year. Is that sounding familiar, guys? Uh, and won two NCAA tournament games in our five years there. Then we went on to Penn State for a total rebuild during COVID. Then I got the opportunity to be the head coach at Monmouth. Wouldn't have taken it if Kristen hadn't, uh, hadn't been so supportive there. But we moved to the Jersey Shore. So we're talking Ivy League, Big East, Big Ten, then now a first-time head coach. All the lessons from Hamlin, West Virginia carried me along the way. These are just players that want to plan as a person, a student, and for their basketball career to be great. And it's my job and my opportunity to create the standard for them, to hold them to it, and to the watch them meet or exceed that standard every day. Every level. Again, every move was never to prepare a shiny resume or to get the next job. It was always to prepare me for this moment. Every decision was not based on a salary or a title or a conference. For me, it was where I could go to use my gift to empower young women to reach for greatness. These women will end up impacting me far more than I will ever impact them. And the 21 years of all of the women that I've been blessed to coach, I thank each of them, and I can't wait to do this with you guys. 
So all of this journey, all of this madness from a tiny little town um, brings us here today, all of us, as rockets. The other question I've had a lot this week is, why Toledo? They're like, Toledo? Hmm. Five hours from West Virginia, which is great, so my mom will be up here a ton, or six hours from Kristen's family. But it's bigger than that. I've already spoke to the leadership, the stellar education, the tra champion tra tradition. You guys are known for your fans here. <laughs> Quick shout out to the Igniters, the season ticket holders, and everyone else for their unwavering support. I truly, this is honest, I feel like the rest of the world is finally catching up to the love of women's basketball, and Toledo has been far, far outpacing the rest of the country for a long time. So thank you all for your unbelievable, unwavering support over the years. Uh, when I was an assistant at Marquette, we got an email one day, I helped with scheduling, and it was somebody down here, don't recall who, reaching out to see if we wanted to do a home and home. Toledo was really good, of course. And we were having some success at Marquette as a top 10 team in the country. So Toledo thought that would be a great home and home series to start. Quickly replied, thank you so much. We are good. In my head, I was like, we're not playing there. <laughs> this is an impossible place to play. And it's because of what you bring to this environment and because of the work and dedication of the players but I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you and to continuing to make this an impossible place to play. You can feel the tradition when you walk in Savage. Look at these banners. <laughs> it's crazy. All the players of the years. It's really remarkable what's been built here. And to anyone who has ever worn the jersey, and especially to those wearing it now, you are the reason we are all here. I promise to hire an elite level staff to recruit self-motivated, competitive, great teammates. I promise to create an environment where our players can be themselves on and off the court and where they can love playing the game of basketball, which they grew up doing. I think sometimes we forget they dreamed for this, they worked for this, and it's our job to support their journey. We will be tough, we will be disciplined, we will play with pace and purpose, and we will have a contagious energy that is undeniable on the floor. I spent the last six days getting to know this team. These young ladies are high achieving in every area of their life. There's a genuine willingness among them to prioritize one another, which as we know in this era is extremely rare. I believe connection is a competitive advantage, and we will make sure that we continue to build upon that. I look forward to not only reaching the standard of excellence that's been created here, but as Brian said, raising it. And I can't wait to out-team the other team. Thank you so much. Go Rockets. Okay, now I'd like to invite Jim Heller to come on up here. We're going to have a little, little fun coach, a little Q&A. What's your good side, Jim? Okay, all right. I want to make sure you're comfortable. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Can you folks hear me? <laughs> Thank you. You know, I thought about this when I got this list of questions. And the first thing that came to my mind, has any of this sunk in that you're now the women's basketball coach at the University of Toledo? Came sight unseen. We've covered that. I got off the plane in Detroit, hustled here, uh, was sitting at the, the last red light over here right before Savage, before you could see campus. There's a U Toledo this way sign. Holding my breath, a little bit anxious. I knew it was going to be unbelievable, but as I, as I pulled forward and I saw 
the campus buildings, just overwhelmed. Um, and then you walk in here, and then really the, the moment was meeting the team in person. Um, their energy, their love for one another, their love for this place really hit home. And I think that's when I realized that I have, I have the honor and privilege of being the women's basketball coach at Toledo. Oh, an honor and a privilege to have you here. Your impressions, and you were very kind about speaking about those during the press conference. What was going through your mind when you met these lovely young women for the very first time? They're awesome. Um, you know, I watched a lot of film. We played Buffalo in the WNIT, so I got to see some, some MAC games. Uh, we have basketball on in our house almost all the time. Uh, we have, you know, Big Ten Network, and we're on the, the apps and all of the things. And so uh, also coached Nan at Penn State uh, before she transferred here, and so always follow the players that we've recruited. And so I've, I've seen them play. But getting to know them as people and hearing, you know, when a, when a young person's first question is, can I finish my master's degree? Can I still pursue um, nursing? Because that's what I came here to do. You know, these are some of the incoming freshmen as well. Um, it made me realize how high achieving they are in every area. Like, I'll, I'll just keep saying that. I'm so impressed by who they are, their toughness, their discipline, um, their sense of humor started to come out a little bit recently. So they're getting a little more comfortable, which is good. But... They're going to be a lot of fun to work with, and we're going to continue to, to play a little bit quicker. And one thing you'll hear us say in our program a lot is joy is a focus before it comes a fe becomes a feeling. It's already who they are. They play with joy. They have joy for one another. And so I can't wait to be their leader. And, and uh, we spend a lot of time together, so we're going to have a lot of fun. If you'll allow me to ask you to jump into the way back time machine, and fortunately it's not that way back. You're young, okay? Uh, Marquette. Penn State, was there one particular instance at each stop in Milwaukee and State College, respectively, that you feel prepared you for this job now? Well, I think my mentor had a big part in that, right? She allowed me um, a lot of autonomy, a lot of responsibility. Um, she poured into me and put me in uncomfortable positions. Um, but, you know, I think it was the collection of experiences that when we move forward to Penn State, we could rely upon having built a program, having gone to NCAA tournaments, having won games in the NCAA tournament. Um, and you can, you can get a blueprint and say you're gonna build a house, but until you've built a house, you don't know what all it entails. And so then when we moved on to Penn State, we were able to rely upon what went well, what didn't go well, what we could do better. Um, and then was able to take that with me to Monmouth and excited to implement some things that I think will be impactful here. Is there one coaching mentor, per se, that you would like to mention by name to our great team and fans? I love all of them. Um, I would say in this particular transition, Amanda Butler, uh, the former head coach at Florida and Clemson, has been really encouraging. And, and you know, we're both grounded in our faith. We both have the same core values. We, the, both, the, th the same things matter to us. And so when people talk about what's important, uh, that might be different than what's important to me. I talked about where I'm from and how I grew up. And, you know, my dad was a Marine Corps veteran and went to college on the GI Bill in his 30s. So I identify as kind of a first-generation college student. So some of the things that are important to some people aren't important to me at all. So being able to, to rely on Amanda and, and she knows what's important to me and making a decision based on that was instrumental in this, in this process. I'd like to ask you a little bit about your coaching style and the fact that how it might be similar to what we've seen here under the past 16 years, or equally as important, what might be different? Well, we're going to continue the tradition of toughness and discipline, highly skilled, uh, highly motivated, hardworking players. I think you'll see a little bit more pace. Um, we'll get out and go a little bit more. Uh, going to get a little bit more aggressive on defense and take, you know, take a few more chances. Uh, you know, you've had some incredible players here. I was so impressed with our post players yesterday and our workout. So I think you're going to see, you know, we'll, we talk a lot about five willing and able passers and five willing and able scorers. And we have that sitting here already on this front row. Um, we're going to shoot some more threes than maybe traditionally Toledo has shot. And then we're going to trust our big time rebounders to go get it if we miss. But we're going to have a lot of fun and play a really exciting brand of basketball. We have a tremendous nucleus returning next year, no question about it. Uh, but there are two young ladies uh, that 
uh, are leaving a void. Uh, in my book, their first ballot Hall of Famers, and one day I look forward to seeing another jersey up there uh, in Quinesia Lockett and Sophia Wired. We went for years without a MAC Player of the Year, and then we have two back to back, and those are great voids to fill. But you've also been at this game a little while. That's going to open the, open the door for somebody else. And that's what we've talked about, is creating the space for them to grow into that next evolution of their game. Um, and I think they're all excited for that. It's not, it's not lost on me how impactful those players have been to this program and this community, but they've left the program better than they found it. And they have empowered these young women to step into that, that empty space and fill it with, with all of their talents. And I'm most excited to see the leaders emerge and, and really take hold of this program and put their stamp um, not just on the court, but on our future uh, in recruiting and in mentoring and, and bringing up the younger players. Without recycling too much, and I'm sure you have heard this time and time again, for 33 years, these people seated here have led the Mid-American Conference in attendance. For almost every one of those years, we have been top 30 in the nation in attendance. You've talked about the team. You've talked about your family. You've talked about the experience with the leadership in the university. Now what do you have to say to the best fans in all of women's college basketball? You're just as much a part of the success and the tradition here as, as the players and as I hope to be. Um, I, your reputation precedes you. I've got messages from friends. Hey, you know about the fans up there, right? They're going to they're gonna carry you to some wins. They're going to carry you through some tough home games. And just your passion, not for these young women, not only on the court, but who they are and their goals and dreams, you know, from our mentor program all the way down the line to, to what they're trying to achieve off the court. Um, it's so incredibly special. And I'm excited to watch them run out for the first time and hear the roar. I'm excited for a big three to go up and hear you guys uh, get loud. Um, it, this is an incredible time for women's basketball, period. And like I said, I feel like we're ahead of the curve. But we can even continue to grow and build upon this. So I just want all of you to know that I, I genuinely can't wait to meet you. You're going to see me a lot. I'm going to be available to you. We're going to make sure the team is available to you. Um, but we're going to have a lot of fun in this arena. And um, let's blow the roof off. Uh, I want to thank you for getting me out of work for an hour. I am so grateful to you for that. Uh, this much I do know. You're joining a wonderful family here, and I mean this. After almost 20 years on the job with this university, welcome aboard, Coach. Thank you so much. All right, that'll uh, wrap it up uh, for today. Now for our... As I mentioned, for friends in the media, we're going to reconvene over in the creative studio. Uh, for those of you who don't know where that is, it's, it's the old Rockies locker out here in the hallway. So fans are welcome to stay in the hallway. You'll be able to hear. We'll pipe in, and you'll be able to watch if you want to see what our, uh, our uh, friends in the media have to ask Coach Bogus. And also, one other quick reminder, as I mentioned at the start, uh, Coach will be at the game tonight, at the baseball game at Fifth Third Field between our Rockets and the University of Michigan. Fourth inning, section 105. So and that'll do it. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and go Rockets. Yeah.